All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the regular scheduled council meeting. September 18th, 2023, 6 p.m. Good evening, council, administrators, and our audience members. Thanks for joining us this evening. Ms. Berner, if you would call roll, please. Yep, Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Vaughn. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Roadwald. Here. Seven members present. Thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Fire Chief Trustee. <laughs> Bless our city, bless our council, and our citizens, that thy perfect will be done. Bless our first responders and troops and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Uh, action on the minutes for the September 5th regular council. So moved. Right. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Eggleston. Any discussion on those minutes, council? Yes. Mr. Graham? I'm finding it. Okay. Um, the first page, just under the informational items, the bridge asked for a vote to no, no hearing is needed. And then the next paragraph, it said, Lindsay mentioned the Rite Aid in town was not one scheduled for closing. I believe that was me that said that. I thought it was Mr. Lindsay. I said that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I said it too. I mean, we were both talking about it, okay. but I think I got it first. Yeah. I had heard there was a closing. <clears throat> Draw my objection. All right. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Anyone else? No one you're ready, please. All right. Council Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Those minutes are accepted 7-0. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Moving on to, excuse me, communications. Emails from business owners regarding <coughs> donation bins. Did you want to go over that, Mr. Bridge? Um, if that's something that you want the clerk to read into record just for the minutes, it's that, up to you. It's a long, it's a pretty long email. but. Yep. And just we got we got a uh, email from uh, another email. Yes, or do what? Say another email. Right. Uh, emails regarding the concerns of the donation bins we see throughout town. Um, you know, we all know that they serve a good purpose, but unfortunately, a lot of people have used them. You see people dropping off couches, and uh, I mean, really, pretty much anything. Uh, probably car tires, whatever it may be. But just basically that that they're abused and they're becoming nuisance. Uh, I know that some areas they they deal with them uh, as far as like they'll be manned. So that you know they're only there when someone's with them, and then you can kind of control what's what's been dropped off. But just uh, we received uh, you know some uh, concerns about those, and we'll probably be dealing with that here shortly tonight. So, um, and we do have the uh, authors of those emails in presence and attendance tonight as well, showing their support. Uh, thank you, yes. Mr. McDonald and Mr. McCore, uh, for coming tonight. We appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, city manager's report, Mr. Bridge. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council members of the public. I'd like to share for you the city manager report, dated September 18, 2023. Police report, we had 336 calls taken, 50 reports, 65 assists, uh, 15 criminal arrests, 7 felony arrests, 3 uh, misdemeanor arrests, 5 warrants, 39 traffic stops, 26 traffic warnings, 13 moving violations, 1,353 business checks, and six code enforcement follow-ups and zero crashes. Uh, those are their numbers for the uh, month of August. Uh, council, have any questions? I'd be happy to entertain them. Thank you, sir. Great. And moving on to city manager report. Uh, at the last meeting, council wanted us to look at um, and duly noted and duly needed to put some information in back into the uh, uh, reports for our planning and zoning department. Um, while that was unmanned, I was kind of doing the best I could manning that, so the reports kind of didn't make it into the packets. But now we have a full-time person dedicated to that. Um, I had sent them out to about three council members to get their opinion on it. So the rest of you council members are just now seeing this probably for the first time. Uh, so I just want to go over it real quick. The first page is always going to be like a general overview page. Then as you get into the report itself, you get more detailed line items in there uh, with his code enforcement uh, progress. 
And then he's going to finish it up with the mayor's court report because if you got the code enforcement stuff that said work order issue, I mean, court in mayor's court, you're not going to see that. So we wanted to put a mayor's court report with that as well. Um, with that being said, the, the unique thing about this report is going to be this. You guys are actually going to get this every two weeks, opposed to a, a, a monthly report from the department every month. And we say that because when Colleen reports on finance, it's always the month before. So if we were to supply this with you and you were to get information and someone wanted to question on it, the data is going to be old. So we figured the only way that council would have updated information is if we, every two weeks, submit this with the report. So you guys will have that so most updated information that we have as well. So look over this. And, uh, we'll, again, it will come back to you next meeting as well. Um, and then we'll get some, if you guys want to tweak it a little bit for the rest of the council members, let me know what you think of it. And then uh, we will continue on putting them into the packets. Do you have any questions over what we see now? No, was, that's great though. I really like it, so thank you. Sure, absolutely. All right, Mr. any Mr. questions on the planning and zoning? Mr. Bridge. Yeah. Sorry, Mr. Uh, Bridge. Yeah, sure. On this uh, report from the zoning, or planning department, I'm sorry. Uh, I think you guys did a good job. Uh, the first one that I saw did not have lines or anything. It was a nightmare to read. Um, I'm glad to see that you put the lines in there to make it easier reading for separation. But overall, I think you guys did an awesome job on this, and thank you. Thank you. And thank the uh, planning uh, person, too. <coughs> Sure. David. It may look a little bit um, more organized on the front page next time you see it. We'll have the heading up there um, and pose it down here, maybe up top. So, but the general layout should not change unless the next meeting council as a whole sees something they want to do different. But I think it is relatively informative. Okay. Any questions? Oh, great. Thank you. And moving on with the city manager report, our flying EMS report with fire chief, chief, uh, chief Steve Trustee. Council. Two months left on our Elizabeth contract. We will be out of Elizabeth Township as of the midnight on the November 6th. Okay. Any chance we'll be renewing it? No, sir. Okay. They, they are where they are. They are no farther along than the night that they turned in their year uh, uh, notice. notice. Uh, they did hire a fire chief. Uh, they are in the, their processes, but. I look for them as of, as of uh, November 7th to be doing what's called geographic mutual aid. I kind of gathered so in the tone of your response. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Mr. Mm -hmm. Lindsay. Question either for the city manager or the fire chief. Since from your comments, it appears that they're not ready to roll, uh, have they asked if uh, we wanted to extend a contract or look at helping them out or something? I'm just curious as well. I'm not for that at all because the way they acted when he came at trustee commander, what, a year ago? Uh, you know, about last November, I think it was. I'm not looking to help them out. I'm just curious if they realize they messed up. <laughs> um. Um, I'm sure council remembers how that went down a year ago. And I thank you for remembering that. Um, remember. There has been some discussion about them potentially coming to ask for some extension on the November 6th. Nothing has come to my desk yet. Um, it'll start going through the city manager's office. Um, 
then we'll talk to fire chief about it then we'll ultimately it'll be council's decision how you guys want to move forward with that should they need any kind of assistance or any kind of extension on a november 6th deadline um, but we have heard some rumblings that they're not going to be done in time and they may or may not come back um, but again i just want to stress that nothing has officially come into my office yet for that and when it does we'll immediately pass it on to you guys at the next available meeting mm -hmm. mr mayor sir the, uh, this is for council. The way they acted when they come in here last November, I think it was, or maybe the end of October, and uh, that was in November because he ended the contract, gave us a year notice, I think, at that point. Uh, I, for one, uh, would not even consider voting for an extension on their contract. They said they could do it. They obviously didn't understand what it took to do that. Uh, I'm sure they was probably kind of warned what it would take and was told they couldn't do that. I don't know that to be true, but uh, it takes longer than a year to, to get your new equipment, uh, new hoses, whatever, you know, get personnel. So if that would ever come up, I would encourage council not to extend their contract and let them do what they want to do. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. <clears throat> Mr. Kicko, did you have something? I just wanted to let you know, even with all this going on, we are doing a proper turnover of equipment, files, pump tests, hose tests, and everything. So they will have everything um, from us to them, you know, uh, when we go to, uh, for the, when they go by themselves and we're back in our own station. Did you have something else? Oh, I just want to comment. We were, mm -hmm. Trustees were very disrespectful to us, and especially Mr. Yes, Bruce. yes, they was. So it would take some serious apologizing for me to consider anything. Uh, more like gravel. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, sir. Anyone else on that? All right, back to you, Mr. Rivers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on with the city manager report, our finance report presented by Ms. Harris, uh, <clears throat> is our fantastic finance director. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, council, and members of the public. I haven't still figured out a way to make this exciting. I'm just a numbers girl, but here we go. <laughs> this is for the month of August. Our revenue that we took in was $1,327,816.31 for a total year to date of $7,396,890.57. Our expenditures for the month of August was $840,915.75 for a total expenditure to date, $5,881,577.48. The uh, report, the statement of cash, my beginning balance got a little cut off, but our beginning balance at, the, at January 1st, 2023, in our um, accounts was $7,510,472.46. That number's consistent every month. Our ending balance at the end of August so far is $7,474,000.39, and all the banks are reconciled. For the monthly net income tax collection from Vicki Taylor, our tax administrator, we collected $132,130.21 for the month of August from CCA, and from the state we did receive $17,795.95. Um, we're still up a little bit, about 8% from last year. On the mayor's court for August, they had in court, fine, court costs and fines a total of $4,540 for a year-to-date of $36,153. And then I have um, some other additional little reports on the pool. Would you like me to give you an update on your pool? or? Okay, so um, the revenue for the pool season so far and that ended in August was $116,255.34 and our expenses up through August are $108,868.20. They're carrying a profit right now of $7,386.92. I'll just have a little bit of extra expenditures carried through for utilities. So I'll get that update next month. I believe that's all I have to go over. I'm not going to entertain any questions. Council, any questions for Ms. Harris? Question. Mr. Lindsay. Mrs. Harris, uh, it shows about a uh, positive of 7386.92.
had we not given them the twenty thousand dollars of transfer transfer in back in January <clears throat> to March or May, yes, that they would actually be in the hole right now, wouldn't they, ma'am? That's true. But that, yeah, officially that was on the books as revenue. Right. So if we took that out, it would the uh, the uh, and I think twenty thousand dollars. Correct me if I'm wrong. In recent years, <clears throat> is the lowest amount we've ever transferred into the pool, isn't it? There have been years with more, and I think there was one year that we did not because the fund balance carried forward and it didn't require the transfer right. in. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Thank you, Ms. Harris. That was most exciting. <laughs> you did great. It's not getting any better. She is can it? dance <laughs> where she does that and make I it need more exciting. More. For Maybe you can get little sparklers off of your yeah. 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 board. <laughs> Try a hat. <laughs> Stand yeah. up on the table. Yeah. Oh, I'd really. Yeah, that would be comical. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Motion to Mr. approve. And a motion, please, for the approval of so the reports and May report. Uh, we'll go with Mr. Lindsay and Ms. Eggleston. Your first and second. This is for the finance report. Correct. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadhold? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. That's accepted 7 Mr. 0. Mayor, move to accept the Mayor's Court report. Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Lindsay for the Mayor's Court. Councilman Roadhold? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Accepted 7 0. Thank you. And before we leave the finance report, when council, when you look at the finance report as a whole, it's, it's the longest report of the month when we give these to you because it's just it's so data driven. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to put some of the smaller reports up like the mayor's court or the income tax collections more up to the top of that report opposed to at the very bottom? So you have to go through all that stuff. And that would be awesome. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so we'll do, we'll do like the overview and then like statement of cash and one or two page finance reports and then we'll get to the subsequent reports and then we'll do the revenue and expenses and all the other stuff last. Or, or you could move all the other reports of the finance stuff to the very end of the report and we can look at it later instead of trying to figure out where we're at. Fair enough. Gotcha. If that's okay with council, I mean, that's just my suggestion. I'll tweak it and see what you guys uh, think next time. Uh, do we need a motion for that? No, you're good. <laughs> Thank you. I'm asking because it annoys me too and I have to keep all that stuff to get to the bottom of it. Well, if you want to just not do it, you know, and send it in an email to us, that would no, be fine too. There you go. You're, you're getting it all. Back to you. Thank you. Oh, it is okay. Thank you. And, okay, and continue on the city manager report. Our assistant report is our service report with Mr. Kiko, our assistant city manager. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, still working with Miami Valley Lighting on trying to get our light adjusted out here over the parking lot. Street sweeper ordinance is up for action. We'll have discussion uh, during that uh, portion of our meeting. Uh, update on the water department. Uh, it says that I am drafting the request for qualifications for <coughs> consultant engineer to design it. I've already got that completed. It actually will be in the paper tomorrow, um, next Tuesday. And then uh, Mr. Bridge and I will start scoring consultants to um, work on that project. And then uh, moving on to the sewer department, we're still working on scheduling the clarifiers. They are on site and we'll be uh, getting those installed as soon as they're uh, Pearson Construction has the availability. Uh, Falcon Drive was complete except for a few manholes that need to be adjusted and uh, A and B is out doing those in a lot of their projects with their Mr. Manhole tool. So they will be out to finish that up. Uh, Fenwick Drive reconstruction phase two. Um, I did send the residents out a letter uh, for just after Labor Day uh, through the county and myself making contact with them. They are still waiting on precast structures for the dry wells. So, I will probably have to try and get out another letter to them now because usually it's not like this, but uh, they said they'll still only need about 30 days to get it completed. So, but I still haven't had an update on a date. Um, Carlisle Park phase one for the basketball court and swings, that is currently out for bid. Uh, the count, county put that out for bid. The city crews, in order to save some cost, we removed an old concrete foundation that was near those pine trees uh, just off of Church Street. And then uh, we needed to take down a tree uh, in order to fit that in there. And we took that down as well to, uh, to save the city some cost on this project. Um, 
Nature Works grant. Uh, we still have to, uh, you know, look at a, a decision on the additionals that I had put out a month ago on, you know, the additional possible repairs uh, because of the liner project. And additional items, the P sidewalk, I, I had looked into that. There is current available right away for that. Don't know why it's never, has not ever been installed. Uh, there is currently um, ADA compliance as we are, uh, as of right now. Uh, we'll just have a discussion on a time frame, probably to complete here in early uh, 24 when we can get a crew out there to put in. I'll have to hire a contractor to put that much sidewalk in and two new ADA ramps because it will be um, required to have those done. So uh, we'll be looking to budget that in uh, for 2024. 235 curve study, our kickoff meeting with the engineer is on 920 uh, to look at various items that uh, may um, assist with that corner or with that curve. And then as most people are aware, the paving on 235 did start today. I believe it will still be going on tomorrow. They had uh, a significant uh, repair to make on their paver wheel. Uh, one of the wheels they had some issues with. So they actually, actually had to stop short today of uh, their paving and, and leave some uh, millings open, which I usually do not like to do. So um, I can answer any questions on that report or clarify anything else that might be going on. Went into Rite Aid today and I talked to Janice, complimented him on Right, finally getting around to doing some landscapes. He said, oh no, that wasn't us. Nice. So thanks to the uh, city crews, they did a great job. It looks pretty good. Okay, yeah, I think we got the weed portion of it done, but I still think there's a little bit of uh, the landscaping as far as tall weeds and grass that I think they still got to work on, but I think, I, I believe that's by Friday or something, because I also saw another contractor there today that pulled up at the same time our crews were doing some of the work. But we're still working on that. And a second, I don't, I don't know if this is you or not. Construction crews parked all their equipment on Pike Street in front of it. Right there in the no parking area? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Chief, I doubt it will get a truck through there. Yeah, you'll, you'll better get one. I went through there and saw you can get a, an engine through there. Okay. So it's okay for them to park there? Right. Yeah, that was the closest place where we would not prohibit the people doing the brickwork and allow them in a spot where they wouldn't take up. Um, well, there's so many open approaches, and with that boom, we didn't want to block someone's driveway approach, entrance, so it was all no, no parking right there, so it was the best place to put a mill, a water buffalo, and stuff like that. Okay. I'm done. Thank you, Mr. Horst, Mr. Um, the founded in 1810 sign that was at Hensley Park that we had we still got to discuss on the 1810 out there at the, the city because I know we discussed it while Mr. Bridge was gone and we had, I haven't had a chance to follow up with them on what past uh, what we had talked about or where we gonna how we're gonna get that remounted. That's one of those old Hensley Park. Yeah. Yes. It was all this side. Mr. Mr. Lindsay. Uh, Mr. Kiko, uh, I've had some conversations with a couple of residents today. Yeah, you probably know what it's about. Oh, I do, and I'm well prepared. <laughs> when was the last time our water was tested? Uh, it's tested every day. I, I looked. I looked at on the. I forget the website now. It's on my desktop, and it, it only shows the 22. And I go, no, I'm sure our water's been tested sometime this year. So that. So certain parameters. Um, I'll just make it uh, just a quick lesson here. Uh, certain parameters are done every day. Chlorine, yeah. pH, total coliform, bacteria. We do six of those. That's what but I. A lot of things are every day. Nitrates, nitrites, um, we're on in every other year, or if something's coming up, we'll do one in every year's schedule. This year was lead and copper. Uh, we've already completed, got, I got all the lab samples for 23 right here. Uh, Non-detectables in parts per billion, which is more stringent than the parts per million that was described. However, that is our city water as a whole in the city. If there is something possibly going on, and, and, I, and I know where you're going with this, um, they're, they can be close, but they're not certified lab. Well, I'm just asking yes. when the water was tested. I'm, I'm just, I know, I know, but I, I got to clarify that we lab test 
every year. The consumer confidence report is done at the end of that testing year. So every June we do the prior years, but testing never stops okay. with certified laboratories. And that's what I, I, I told the individuals. I said, you know, my understanding is it's tested every day because they have to keep certain things an eye on it. I says now when they send it out to the state or EPA or whoever ha they have to send it to, I said, I do not know when that's done. So that's why I was asking, so I'd have an answer for them. Yeah, EPA gets the results at the same time we get the results from the lab. So they get them at the same time. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the reports you have, is it possible to get a copy of those emailed out to council? Yeah, I mean, every, every, everything, everything's public. I mean, yeah. it's try, it'll be hard to read. There are a bunch of formulas. So, like, for instance, I got trihalomethanes, haloacetic acids, um, stuff like that. Um, I'll send them to you. It'll have maybe try an MCL or an action level. But, yeah, it's it, basically the CCR covers the last year. And then I'll just send out a page or two to Mr. Bridge to send. We'll, we'll all send out it together okay. on a few of those. Um, I'll just send the front page out. There's just a lot of information. Now, will it show up on the, the uh, CCR? Next year's CCR will have all of 23s. Uh, uh, it'll be in 24 when we they see it online. Yeah, for all the 23s online. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, sir. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. So just to say it one more time. So we we test daily for the things you'd mentioned: chlorine, pH, hardness. Yep. You know, right. And, and then, then six times a month is coliform bacteria, which is what most people would be sick from. And then nitrates, nitrites, uh, lead and copper. Uh, there's a few other ones out there, barium, stuff like that. Those are on a scale based on what your water has previously done. And they're all done within coordinates of the EPA. Yeah, they give us a they give us a schedule in December of what we have to do for that year within certain months, within certain time frames of the year, and how you have to do it. Okay. Um, and just FYI, the water tower that has mold in is leaking is not ours. It's not, it's not what? It is not the city of New Carlisle's. Nope. The city of New Carlisle, within our corporation limits, has our own treated city water. Yeah. yeah. Park Lane, Medway, Crystal Lakes is on Clark County Utilities. Okay. Well, they have their own water tower. We have our own water tower. Our water tower is in pristine condition. It just got inspected a month ago. Um, just, there's just a lot of misinformation <laughs> that we are nowhere connected. I'm just letting you know that uh, if, if someone has a question on a specific item, um, I can give it to them because I have a license. There's no way I would jeopardize my license to give false information. But do, do me a favor um, because I, I, I ran into one of our water guys over the weekend and he, he was really just kind of upset. He was like, you know, we do our best. We, you know, we do everything by the book, by the EPA, by everything we're supposed to. And he was really upset. I mean, not, not mad, just like down upset. Like, you know, they just took a beating when they're doing everything that they're supposed to properly. It, it so, happens. So do me a favor and tell them at least, you know, that they are very much appreciated for the work they do keeping our water safe. I'll do that. Mm -hmm. That's our may follow up. Uh, Mr. Kiko, the, uh, the schedule you said you get in December? Yeah, it's December, trade before January for the whole year. It tells, tells us what, or do, what to do. I'd like to have that if possible when it comes in. Is that for future, for future, I, 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 I can say this is what they got to do. I, I will look and see if that's uh, public information. Some of our stuff, like our wellhead source protection, that is all confidential. Right. Um, I will find out if that is. If the testing date should, should, be, should be all right, I would think. Well, well, I'll, I'll find out for sure. If you would, sure. sir. The, uh, and... I am, the page that I heard it was on, I am not on that page. So I, neither, neither am I. I get, I get told about it. This was one-on-one -on -one conversations with people. And when they were telling, in fact, they showed me the tower that I looked at it and I thought, you know, that looks like the tower they took down. But the trees, I go, you know, I think this is a Clark County tower. I'm saying even our tower. And they go, well, it's our tower. It says, I go, no, it doesn't say Carlisle. Bear. And if it does, it's down in Carlisle, not New Carlisle. Yeah, I said, but uh, the, the tower we had that looked like this oh, behind yeah. the old the church up here off of Jefferson, I said that tower's been gone. What 
six months a year oh no it's been we did it during 2020 so yeah. oh so okay yeah it's hard to believe how much i pay attention yeah. to the power up in the air yeah. hmm. thank you sir thank you sir thank you. <clears throat> you're referring to the lady who posted on facebook how terrible the water is oh i don't know what she posted oh, those appear to just be test strips yeah well, I have test strips at home, but it's not for my water, it's for my spa. <laughs> and I don't really see any need for you to send us all this stuff. That's why we pay you to keep an eye on that kind of stuff for us. And if there's something wrong, I'm sure you'll let us know. Actually, um, when, when things go into violation, actually the mayor is always uh, included first with the managers. So they, they have their, um, so if, if he gets something, uh, you, everyone would know it. Like, I can't hide it, That's it's just a problem. Well, I mean, in all seriousness, because I remember, what was it? It was about five years ago where we had a, we went into a boiled rice advisory. Yeah. We did, it went to me and then we sent out a, mm -hmm. it was on the news, we put it on the news or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We never did have a problem, it was just a precautionary. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I remember that. All right. And it was something they found something somewhere, but I forget where, where it was at. We was on a boil advisory, but I don't know if people actually boiled the water or not. I didn't. I figured if it was going to kill me, I'm old. I can die anyway. It don't matter. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chico. And moving on under city manager report and informational items. The first bullet point is a nature word pool grant dis dis decision, uh, discussion and decision. Um, I don't know if council's really prepared to make that. So if you, I don't want to skip around, but I am going to be making a motion later or at requesting a motion for water rate study. So I don't know if we can maybe do that relatively soon and just do one special meeting for the nature work and then the water rate, because that nature work is going to be hopefully some in-depth discussion about how we want to move forward with that pool situation. Right. So if council's okay with that, we can kind of either look at doing the motion now or waiting to set the motion when we get down to that part of the manager report. However you guys want to do it. Council. Is this something we want to meet like before a regular schedule? When do you, meeting? When do you, how soon do you want the information on the? Um, I would, if we can have it done within the next month. Um, you help, what's, when do you need an answer on your water rate though? Sooner than that? I'm pretty much at that baseline that I showed. And okay. it, it will be, I mean, we're pretty much so sometime in the next two or three weeks would be great right. to have that special meeting. Uh, we have a meeting coming up on 10-2. Do you want to meet an hour before that? Do you want to do a separate meeting with a different day? Um, what date was that? 10-2. That would be 10-2. It would be the first one in October. And that we'd, meet at, we'd have to meet at 5, though, instead of 6. I don't know how Mr. Bond is with his schedule and Mr. Um, Road wall. That works for me. About my schedule. Are we able to do it after, since it's maybe a short meeting? And we can roll over. Probably. Yeah. That's yeah. another thing, too. We're over. Close. I'll be in, yeah. I'd rather start. I'll be in uh, uniform. No, that's all right. Normal clothes. What about five? If, is is five <laughs> o'clock too close for Mr. Moon? Can we do a 5 30 if that's? Or five we okay? Can, we can do five. Okay. Let's see what I can do. Mr. Graham? Yeah. Okay. Five it is. Ten two. Really. Have you put a legal hat out for that meeting yet? No, I'm not tonight. Mm -hmm. yeah, we had that. We already have a mm -hmm. discussion on the water rates and the nature work grant. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all. <coughs> Ten to five p.m. Nature water rates. Great. Thank you. Uh, moving on with that, we have a bullet point. It said Rumkey Waste Management. Just wanted to bring council up. We did have a kickoff meeting with Rumkey. Uh, both parties are super excited to get their services and, and cost savings to our citizens. Today was the first day that that ordinance that you guys passed was effective. So tomorrow we're going to start the promotional side of things on our Facebook to let citizens know, hey, this transition is coming. Uh, and awesome that you're actually going to see your bills reduced, um, which is we're excited to get that out to the, to the public as well. Uh, just so uh, some dates so everyone's on the same page. So right now, tentatively on November 13th, they're going to be dropping off all the carts that they're going to be delivering to our citizens. We're going to use the community garden, their, their long pavement, pavement area there, as a drop-off point and distribution point. If that date changes, I'll definitely update council, but right now that's what we have set, and that is 1113. Uh, as far as the waste management side of things goes, I'm not sure if all the council knows or just a select few, waste management is not happy. They did not get a chance to bid on this. Uh, it's an unfortunate sequence of events how it went down, um, but um, basically they did not 
uh, put their bid in time. So uh, unfortunately, we will not be able to do business with them moving forward. So right now, what we're waiting on is an Excel sheet that has all of our service levels on it. Um, so basically, every customer they have in the city, and it's going to let us know if they're on the uh, low volume, high volume, or you know, senior level car service. And that way, it's going to make it very easy for Rumpke to do that transition. If we do not have that information from waste management, Rumpke just has to take an extra step and mail out flyers to people. And now what it's going to do is our customers now have to call Rumpke and say, I want to continue on with this. If they, you know, choose to want to stay or Rumpke is just going to put them all on the standard and you guys have to call and adjust. We're really hoping waste management works with us to get us that Excel sheet. Um, another thing to this is we also um, have not heard from waste management about the removal of their carts. So in other municipalities, they have basically sent a letter out seeking an agreement between, with, for us, for example, would be between us and them that they're just going to give us our carts and then we have to dispose of them. So Rumpke said if that is the case, that Rumpke would take care of those carts for us. Um, we don't want to put that undue burden on Rumpke, so we're still a waiting game to see how waste management is going to ha handle their carts uh, as well. So any questions on that transition from waste management? I'd be happy to entertain any questions on that. Did you say they just get rid of those carts? They just oh, yeah. they don't reuse them or nothing? Oh, they yeah. just throw them away? Oh, yeah. Apparently they recycle them. And where do you think I get all my ones for the ballpark? <laughs> well, do you need more? Because there might be more available. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe two or three. You got them up for the ballpark, you said? Okay. I just want to um, try it. <laughs> yeah. They stored them in I was shocked, too. I thought they would take them, sanitize them, them, or use them. No, they just recycle them. Um, they they uh, use custom wares. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Bridge, two questions. Mm -hmm. You said the distribution was going to be at the community garden to pick up your new trash container? Is that what no, you that's said? where they're going to drop them off. Oh. Rumpy's going to deliver them to the houses. They just need a central oh. point to drop oh, them Oh, okay, off. okay. I, I didn't catch that part that he's bringing it to them. Oh, no. I'm no. Say to that. No. not sure how I'd get mine there. It's a long walk. No, <laughs> and, no. The Rumpy's going to deliver them. They just use them as a drop off. And, and, and the second question, if waste management does not make an agreement or something and they just leave these containers, would Rumpke pick those up and not bring us their retainers? Uh, I mean, Rump just use what we have and, and they don't have to distribute new containers. No, no, because they We can paint Rumpke on them. I don't think that'll work. Uh, Rumpke's a great community player with this and partner mm -hmm. in this particular thing that they, they said they would help the community out and remove those for us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we could burn them in the backyard, I guess. No, we can't. Send up smoke our code. Smoke signal. No, no that's, that's, that's against our own codes. <laughs> so we're not going to be doing that. Can we repeal that code? No. <laughs> he says no. Go across the creek and burn them. Exactly. Yeah, across the creek and burn them. It's outside the city. Yeah. You still get the smoke in the city, though. <laughs> It'd be right up there by his, by his office, wouldn't it? Is I don't want to smell or? that. <laughs> um, Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Any other? You're ready to go? Yeah, I'm good. I'm okay. good. Thank you. No problem. Uh, moving on to the city manager report under uh, Habitat for Humanity. We had a raise the wall event. Quite a few elected officials showed up to that event as well. We want to say thank you for that. A lot of community members showed up for that one. That was the second Habitat house that we had, the council had worked with Habitat to get in. We basically raised the walls and actually uh, installed them and, and permanently put them into the foundation. So again, a great turnout and thank you for all, the, the, all of those New Carlisle folks who showed up and showed the support for the family. Residential development update. So Honey Creek, the reserves at Honey Creek, that is the development off 235. Um, we have a Brubaker Drive dedication plat that we're going to be coming to the planning board with. So that is that little part of Brubaker Drive that the Hensley family has donated to the city to allow them to make that second interest from Brubaker Drive into that development. So the motion with that is it has to go through the planning board first. They'll get their hands on it and then we'll come to you guys. It's a very simple meeting. It shouldn't take too long. And that's, I think, might be the last step for them to go through for them uh, for any time soon. They may have to wait another year to do any major changes to the plan. But that should get them over the hump that allows to get that insurance going in. Arbor Homes, we had a, a, a follow-up meeting with them uh, last week. Um, they have switched up their preliminary plan just the hair. That retention pond they had at the um, north of the Callan property. I'm sorry, south of, nor it was north of the Callan property. Um, size was fine. They're having issues getting water from the far side over to that. So they actually put a resection, second, second retention pond in there. Unfortunately, when they brought it to the city staff, they had that second retention pond. Um, hopefully council can remember this. 
They had a really nice community square in that development where they had the, the playground equipment, the accessory, like, well, that's where they had the second retention pond. So we immediately said, we don't like this. I don't think council's gonna like that. Please look at moving it to a different location. That's what they're doing. They're trying to figure out where else they can put it. We also took that entrance off Addison, New Carlisle, and moved it further north off at, north up to Addison. So just in case there should be any stacking that, that happens, it's a little further north as opposed to south. So once we get the set of plans that finalizes those, then we'll make the trigger and that'll go back into the planning board first, and then it comes back to you guys. And that should be their last set until they get the final in. So um, those are moving along. Last I spoke with Rob, he is the project manager for the Honey Creek development. He said about four months uh, for ground start moving, and that was about a month ago. So hopefully if that's still on track, we'll see some ground earth being moved. We still have one more set of legislation to go through with them for the TIF. The TIF you guys did before that just established the TIF. We don't have any working numbers. So once we have the numbers, then we come back to council to actually put those numbers into the formula. Um, Internal 2024 budget discussions, they will begin 9-22-23 with staff, and we'll come to city council shortly after that. We're excited to get that going. And we already set the water rate discussion. I don't have any potential uh, additional topics that have come up since I made this report. So with that being said, the upcoming legislation is our general housekeeping ones that we do every year. And that is our li liability insurance renewal, our health insurance renewal, our ordinance uh, to accept our codification update, and then lastly, the 2024 operating budget. Uh, any questions for the city manager report? I'd be happy to entertain them. Questions for Mr. Bridge? Right. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Bridge. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, moving on. Oh. Before some, or, um, sorry, comments from members of the public. If you have any questions, comments, or any of the above, please go to the podium. We need your name and address, <coughs> and please try to keep it to five minutes. Just on any topic, or what you just got? Anything you want to go to talk about. Go to the podium if you would, please. Yep, right behind you. We'll just need your name and address for the record. My name is John McDonald, though in this town I'm known as Mr. Mac. And I own Mr. Mac's discount grocery at 409 North Main Street, um, right on 235. So my comments all center around the donation bins that are currently to the north side of my business. Um, we have been taking care of that for years, since they went in. So however long they've been there, we've been taking care of them. Broken glass, um, trash, my staff has cleaned up that space numerous times. Um, during the last five <coughs> years, uh, Mr. Max has grown over 600%. We've gone from two employees to 25. We bring in about 4,000 distinct customer groups to the town of New Carlisle every month. And that's what they get to see. Um, if you've been in my store, you'll know that clean and organized is extremely important to us. It's part of the image we project. Um, we work with the community as much as we possibly can. That hurts, having that over there. It kind of works against what we're trying to accomplish. Um, there's another side of it. I, I heard you mention, you know, it's not always being reused responsibly. There is a crime side to that um, that I personally do a lot with. Um, if you go back and look at your records five years ago, you'll find out that that area was one of the most common places for calls to come into the police. If you check with them now, you'll find out it is just a percentage of that. And that has to do with the efforts of the landlord, the efforts of the town, and me being one stubborn guy. Um, I am constantly moving people off of those bins because I'm not going to you know, shade it. There is a homeless situation here. There's a vagrant situation here. They're very close by to that location. That's a free Walmart to them. They can come over, they go through the stuff, they distribute it everywhere. It's damaged some of the systems at the building. Um, and then we get to clean it up. Um, but also, people congregate there to go through those bins. Um, I have made an agreement with my wife that I will no longer go out there and just throw them out by myself, but I still do. Because I'm worried about my employees and I'm worried about my customers. So the company that runs that is out of Cincinnati. They do not pick up on a regular basis. Uh, they don't pick up on a scheduled basis. And I would dare say we have cleaned it up more than they have since they've put them in there. I also know that the grounds crew at the Dollar General has hired also does that cleanup. So um, I have put up a security camera there. It, it's, it's just a mess every day. Um, five minutes before I came to this meeting tonight, 
I had to ask someone else to move along from shopping in those bins and they were opening all the trash bags that people had left going through the clothes and redistributing the glass and whatever else they could find. So, on a side note, I would like to thank the town. We've grown 600% in five years. We couldn't have done that without the, the town's support and I really appreciate that, especially the police and the city manager's office. Um, it's kind of got us baffled. We, we keep growing bigger than we thought we could. Um, so we're trying to be a positive in the community, and I know that we're starting to have some of the impact that we want, and there's a lot of people who eat because we're there. Um, but I'm asking the town, help me. <laughs> I, can't, I can't keep up with those anymore. Do I entertain questions if anyone has them? No, well, thank you for coming. And you know, I don't know if, you, if Randy has spoke with you about what's up on the agenda tonight, but hopefully, depending on if anybody else speaks, that you'll have your answer here in about 10 or 15 minutes, hopefully. So. That is my lengthy letter that you, or at least one of them that you're reading. So, and I have photographs from whatever season you want, but um, I would also encourage everyone to realize that parking lot is gonna be one of the main parking lots for the heritage of flight. That's what they're going to get to see is what's sitting over there. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Council members, mayor, guests. My name is Anderson Moore, Andy Moore, and I own McAdam Center, uh, which is where Mr. Max Grocery is. And I bought that about seven years ago, and it was mostly empty. I think there was two units that were occupied at that point. We had several unfortunate uh, homeless individuals that were staying in the area where Mr. Mack just talked about. Uh, we had one guy I know was in a sleeping bag in, in the empty area in front of the grocery store, which was uh, an empty area at that time. And I worked with for the first couple of years until Mr. Mack came in with, with and took over that far as grocery store, but I worked with the sheriff. And over, over the last, <coughs> last seven years, we have unfortunately had to trespass nine people because of, you know, just uh, ill attitudes, destroying things. Uh, as Mr. Mack spoke, uh, they dumped stuff in. The downspouts coming off the building, they had to change those, put in a new drain system uh, because they were, and then we, we recently put in a fence to keep them from walking in. They pile, pile trash and clothing and it plugs up the drain and then it's, you know, then you've got a mess. So it's just to reiterate what Mr. Mack said. Uh, you know, we invested a lot of money and made a lot of improvements in McAdam Center in the time that, that we've owned it and continue, we plan to continue to do that. And I would appreciate your help, of whatever we can do to uh, clean the place up by not having those bins in there, because they, they have a, they have a, a value and it's, it, but un, unknown to a lot of people, it's a very small value of, that goes to the uh, veterans or whoever that they donate with. Most of the, most of it goes to the company that owns these discount stores and things like Goodwill and they, you know they have discount markets and various places that they take that stuff to and by law they only have to I think it's 10 percent is all that has to go to the veterans or who whichever needy organization <laughs> that they're supporting the rest of it goes to the company that that is handling it so it's uh, but anyway, <coughs> excuse me, it's, it has created a, a real problem for us and especially Mr. Mack because he's there every day and has to clean it up. So we would appreciate having the men's not there. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you for coming tonight. We appreciate it. I need the address. His address. His address. Address. Emily, did you get, no, need an address? You didn't get it. I did not get an address. What's the address of McAdam Center? 409. Yes. That, uh, where, where Mr. Max is 409 North Main. Uh, the McAdam Center actually listed in the county site is, is 101 uh, West Lake and 409 North Main. So there's actually four plots, tax plots in there. All right.
Anyone else? All right, moving on uh, to resolutions. Ms. Mm -hmm. I have resolution 2023-16R, a resolution adding and deleting authorized signatories for all financial accounts of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Lindsay. <clears throat> Um, the explanation of this resolution, it's a housekeeping resolution. Anytime that we have an employee who is moving on or retiring, we have to take them off the signatory list should they be one of the four that are on it and replace with a new one. So in this particular situation, our tax administrator is set to retire here at the end of this month, so we need to get a replacement <coughs> officer for her. And that's what we have in front of council. Any questions, council? When you're ready. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. And that is accepted 7 0. Thank you. We have Ordinance 2023 52. This was introduced on September 5th. An ordinance amending Chapter 1460 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle for the purpose of addressing donation bins. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Cook. And an explanation of this ordinance, um, this would amend the chapter 1460 as stated in the title uh, for the purpose of addressing the donation bins. Um, should this pass tonight, um, we will start sending out letters for those bins that are in town. Um, they may be grandfathered in. Um, if that is the case, how that works is we'll start the violation. Um, once we start that violation, then it goes to the actual property owner, which is, I think, out in California for that particular development, for that particular parcel. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, out of state. And the Pennsylvania. Thank you. Um, once we get more of those three a year, then we just immediately go for abatements, and that's when you usually see the property owner say, hey, can you remove your stuff? Because they're the one who gets the tax bill, not the actual bin company. So if we don't see it removed right away, it may take a little bit of violation period. Let's let us know that once council approves this, that gives us authority to do what they asked us to do on there. Hopefully that made sense. Thank you. Actually, I actually got a question. Now that you said the things you said, have you guys talked with? Because I've I've talked with that I've talked to that management company before. With the property, have you guys dealt with them some? We And they what are they? No feedback. Yeah, they won't. They won't talk to me unless they want to. Really. And even then, they don't give me a chance because we're big enough to maintain. Right. Okay. Yeah, I tried to contact them and buy sixty feet of that parking lot to get them additional parking and without any issues between us and so forth because the line is actually only about two feet off my building and uh, but it's so that so the pins are on their their property that's why it's been difficult for us to get rid of yeah. how does that work mr bridge so if, if this passes and you mentioned grandfather and how is i mean you have to look into that as far as like law yeah we're gonna look into it yeah jake's gonna give me a final answer okay mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to do. Let's just say we find out his grandfather did, and I'm not saying it is or not. It's just when you usually pass a law like that after something's already been established, we have non-conforming uses uh, clause in our in our code. What we do is we start violating it just off that. It is a hazardous community. It has broken glass. It's safety. It's 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 whatever health and sanitation we can put on if we can. And that's when we give the violation. And if they don't come clean it up, then we do it, and then we send that bill to the actual property owner. So that's when we see them take take action. And I talked to them, I think, once years ago. They were responsive to us. I do have the number. I'm going to start giving them a call once this I knew it was going to pass, and then see if they can just graciously say, hey, you need to get this out of here before you even get to that. But we do have process we have to go through should it's not grandfathered in. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Mr. Yes. I'd, I'd like to make a comment that this, this ordinance, for your guys' information, if it passes tonight, it, it won't go into effect until October 3rd before before the ordinance will be legal and we can actually do anything. The other things, as far as trash and stuff and health hazards, I, that can probably already be done, I guess. I don't know. Is that correct? It depends on what it looks like, sure. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, the pictures I've seen it. <laughs> 
But we have to take pictures to make sure it's yeah, out of okay. now. That, that's all I want, just to let you guys know that if it passes tonight, it doesn't go into effect tonight. It, it's beyond the 10th of October, or uh, October 3rd, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Sir. Can I ask a question? Sure. I didn't want to say anything, because I thought it would be included. The one at um, IGA, that one that's just called the Chrysler dealership, mm -hmm. it's always gone. That'd be included yeah. in this ordinance? Yeah. It's gone. It's gone? It should be. I don't know. Okay, okay, sorry. I gave the company a call, and they just removed it on their own. <laughs> All right, Ms. Burner, we're ready, please. All right. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwold? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. <clears throat> Councilman Cook? Yes. I passed the 7 0. Thank you. We have Ordinance 2023 53. This was introduced on September 5th. An ordinance authorizing the city manager or the director of public service assistant city manager to enter into an agreement with Aaron Harder for sludge mm -hmm. removal. Second. Was a motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Burgle. Okay. Uh, for an explanation of this ordinance and ordinance 2023.54, we'll let our assistant city manager, uh, Mr. Kitko, explain them since they deal with his departments. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Uh, because we treat uh, wastewater here for the city of New Carlisle, a byproduct of that is sludge, which just kind of looks like a soft topsoil, and we have to remo remove that every year. The current price of $22 per wet ton is the same price they gave us the previous three years. So real good on this company. Um, there is a not to exceed annually of 30,000 on regular. There is a 50,000 for non-conforming, um, but uh, I'm not aware of we've ever had to use that, but we've got to put that in for legal reasons. And that's it. Thank you. Can I have question for Mr. Kitko? How many wet tons do we have? Uh, we average close to 400. When you're ready, Ms. Mayor. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman yes. Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Absolutely. Councilman Roadwell. Yes. That passes 7 0. <laughs> and we have Ordinance 2023 54. This was also introduced on September 5th. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds of over $35,000 for the purchase of a new street sweeper. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Roadwell. All right, explanation of this ordinance is uh, to uh, request from council to purchase a Timco model 435 street sweeper um, per the ordinance so with a not to exceed of $250,000. And um, that is it. Is that with tape deck or CD player? That <laughs> Blu ray is, is included. Too, too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's your Ben. He, I, he Ben looks like the A track guy. A track. <laughs> hey, Mr. Mr. Lindsay. Uh, Mr. Kitko, is do they have to build this, or how soon will we get this with this deposit? Um, with the ordinance going to effect, um, we will have it for sometime by around next spring. So they do have to build it. It is not on site. Um, this will also be financed. If you have any questions with financing, Miss um, Harris uh, has worked on uh, some numbers, we've gotten some numbers of, if you have any questions on maybe specifically terms of where we're headed with this. And how long is it financed for? Oh, it, well, currently we, we've looked for three, five, and seven year. Uh, the rates actually under municipal government, which are tax free, are at 4.89, which is um, pretty good. And then, um, you wanna go ahead and explain the? So the five year is what we're, we're looking at, um, and we'll be able to, um, sustain the payment with a general fund transfer in each year, which we will need the general fund for either one of the terms, the three, the five, or the seven. What would that payment be, a month or a year? Or? So the annual payment on the five-year term is 51000 with 30000 coming from the general fund and 21000 from the street fund. Okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Sir? Sir? Thank you. Thank you. I, go ahead. No, go ahead, um, kind of off the subject a little bit. So when we get this, how much of a warranty comes with it? Like, is it a one-year warranty? Uh, one year as far as bumper to bumper. Okay. Um, but then everything else, whether it's powertrain, whether it's a rear engine, whether it's a fan, certain things carry certain items from the manufacturer. 
So it's all over the place. I don't know if this would go in or if this is a good idea with the loan. Would it be beneficial to buy a handful of parts? And I'm not talking belts and stuff, but like brushes and things to have on hand for us after warranty to, you know, you need brushes on it or something? Or uh, so wearable items are not warrantied. It'll be depending on how we work, but we will already be getting that regardless. You'll be already getting uh, ordering extra brushes. So when we order this, we're going to say, go ahead and just, we'll get an extra set of brushes. Okay, good. Yeah, that type of thing. Okay, great. Anyone else? Mr. Bond. Uh, so you said it, the payment's going to be 51 and some change per year, per for year. five years. For five years. So the interest that we would pay back, that's at 4.72% on the interest. Um, the oh, this little boy just happens to be here. The total payback we based it on the two hundred twenty-three thousand purchase price. Okay. So the um, payback would be two hundred fifty-five thousand, which is um, interest of thirty-two thousand over the course of the five year. Okay. I don't know. I, I personally have a hard time spending this amount of money. Um, I'm not saying it's a bad deal or anything, but just for something that's going to sit 75% of the time, you know, a, a depreciable asset. But, um, but I think you did a, a wonderful job at, at researching and putting this together. But um, that's just me personally. I, and, and pay out that extra interest for, for something that's going to sit, you know, a large amount of the time. So. Thank you, Mr. Long. Mr. Lindsay. What's the life expectancy of, of this unit? Well, we're, we're seeing multiple, whether it's this model or whatever, in repairable items. As a whole, it's around 20. You know, but in, in that time, we'll, we, we'll, we'll have, you know, probably replace, replace some uh, items on it, as you do with any commercial dusty piece of equipment, like a combine uh, type okay. of situation. What are you thinking on a cleaning schedule during the year? I know it says here multiple times. Is that like once a month or? Well, we're gonna be at least doing the main drags every month okay. outside of the dead of winter. Um, then doing the whole city at minimum, minimum twice, we would like to get in three or four. Whoever's operating it, we'll get to a schedule and be like, okay, um, three's not enough. We gotta go four, right? Four is not enough. We'll be, we'll be making that as we go, depending on the year. If we salt and have to put grid down, we might be doing a little bit more often, but main drags will be a minimum once a month. Okay, right, thank you, sir. Um, <clears throat> what, um, other than the streets being clean, uh, what, what will that benefit also? I mean, I'm assuming that could lighten the load up on drain problems maybe it will help with drains the other two is having the organic material fill in the cracks where we got weeds so we spend probably we do three trips usually around the city of spraying for those weeds in between the asphalt and curb and all the intersections and then where where uh, vehicles are parked because we will probably get into the habit of um, having permanent signs then when we're working in a quadrant alone we will no park that on the street so we have streets sitting there, or vehicles sitting there with grass growing underneath. Um, that that won't be that won't be an issue like it used to be. Okay. Um, but yeah, getting that organic material will. I won't say we will stop spraying, but it will cut it down a lot. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. When you're ready, Miss Barnard. Okay, Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. No. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Ooh, excuse me. No. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. That passes five to two. And looks like that's it. All right, um, we will be going on YouTube break rules of council to go into executive session to discuss uh, employment of a public employee. I don't foresee any business being done after this. So uh, what we'll do is for those of you that may not have been here before, we'll, we'll go into executive session, which is only for us, and, and then we'll come back in normal session. If you guys want to hang out, you're welcome to come back in and probably wrap it up within 
a minute of coming back in. So we need a motion to break rules. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second. To break rules of council to add on the agenda. An executive mm -hmm. session. Yes, thank you. Okay. <laughs> and that was a Come first. On. <laughs> Mr. Lindsay, second. Yes. All right. Yeah. Sure. 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 Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. That passes 7 0. Mr. Mayor, move to go into executive session to discuss the public employee. <laughs> Second. <laughs> My motion by Mr. Lindsay. Second by Mr. Roadwall. Mm, Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? No. Oh, I know it's in Piper. <laughs> Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodon? Yes. That passes Mark six to one. All right. Let's take a quick breather. Have a motion to go back no. into regular Second. Go back in the regular session. Able to second by Mr. Lindsay. Councilman Rodon? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston. Motion by Mr. Lindsay to adjourn. Councilman Rodon. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Pass the 7 0. All right, everyone have a good evening.